This problem and all other practice problems for Calc 2 here at Rutgers can be found in Sarai Studies. A link is in the description box below. Does the following series converge or diverge? This is an LCT question, the limit comparison test. So I always like to write the test that I'm using and the rule. So the rule is based off the limit as it approaches infinity of A of n over B of n, whatever this rho is. This is called rho, it's not a P. So there are three rules. I like to start with the bottom two first. So rho is equal to zero and rho is equal to infinity. And the series B of n converges, diverges, then the series A of n will converge, diverge. The first rule is a little different. This is if rho is not zero, so a non-zero number, and depending on what B of n does, whether it converges or diverges, then A of n will do the exact same thing if rho is a non-zero number. So remember that DCT is IBBCC, so LCT is IBBLC, so there's only a one letter difference and it's easy to remember because L for LCT. So I stands for information, so this is the information that we know plus the information that we need. So we know that A of n is always the given sequence, B of n is what we need, we don't know what that is, which brings us to our second step, which is find B of n. So what we do is we take our given sequence A of n, and I ask myself, at large n, so as n gets really, really big, this eventually becomes what? So we're saying as n approaches infinity, what is insignificant? So in my mind, if n is approaching infinity, then if subtracting 2 and adding 3 is not really going to make much of a difference, so it's really insignificant. And this n cubed overpowers this n squared, so this one's going to go away as well. So we're left with n at the top and n cubed at the bottom. And so this is our b of n. Then our third step is to find the behavior. How does the series b of n behave? So we have the series from n is equal to 1. So if I see n is equal to 1, I'm going to write the same thing down here of b of n. Now remember, in this step, it's always either going to be the p-test that you're going to use or the geometric test. So you have to write it either in the harmonic form, so the p-series form, or get into the geometric form. And you do this simply just by simplifying. So this becomes 1 over n squared. And so you'll see that this is in the form of 1 over n to the p, where p is equal to 2. So we're going to use the p-test. So the way that I remember the rule for the p-test is the movie rating PG-13. So p is greater than 1, forget the 3, converges, and then the opposite is true. In this case, p is equal to 2. 2 is greater than 1. So because p is greater than 1, this series, b of n, converges. That's our little sentence right here. Remember, this p is not the same as this p. This is rho. This is the limit. This is p for the p-test. Okay, so now we know that this series, b of n, converges. So we know that this converges. These two will always be the same, so this will also converge. So our conclusion can either be this or this, and that depends on what our rho is. So that is our next step. The limit that's the difference instead of comparing we're now finding the limit or we're finding what rho is so in this case we take the limit as n approaches infinity of a of n over b of n a of n over b of n so we take a of n and remember we don't actually do over b of n we just flip b of n and then multiply i'm going to take b of n literally flip it because it's really just the same thing as multiplying by the reciprocal do that all the time and you'll be good and that's your limit. Remember that this can be simplified to 1 over n squared. So then this becomes n minus 2 and then n squared n cubed minus n squared plus 3. So this we can rewrite as n to the fifth minus n to the fourth plus 3 n squared. So we can replace that. And so this is a rational fraction, so to figure out this limit, we can divide every term in the fraction by the term with the highest power in the denominator, so that's n to the fifth. So divide everything by n to the fifth. So this cancels out to be 1. This cancels out to be 1 over n to the fourth. This cancels out to be 1 over n. This cancels out to be 3 n to the 3. And so we have the limit as n approaches infinity of 1 over n to the 4th minus 2 to the n to the 5th, 1 minus 1 over n plus 3 over n cubed. And so when we plug in infinity, infinity to the 4th is just infinity, infinity to the 5th is just infinity, infinity to the 3rd is still just infinity. And so all of these become 0, this is 0, this is 0, and so essentially we're left with 0 over 1, which is just 0.
So we have that row is zero. And so we go back to our rule, row is zero. We have this condition. And so therefore we can say that our series, our given series converges. And so that brings us to our last step, which is C for conclusion, where we put everything together in a nice sentence. Since, and I go by the order of my work, so blue and green. So blue says that this series converges, we have n converges. And mine is equal to one to infinity, one over n squared. You can put one over n squared, you can put this, doesn't matter. Converges by the p-test, where p is equal to two, which is greater than one. And, so this is our blue part, I literally just write this. And I say equal to zero, that's my green part, comma, the limit comparison test implies that the given series, from n is equal to 1 to infinity, this right here, converges as well. That's our yellow part. So this is our answer, and this is our justification. So make sure you have your three parts, and that's it for this problem. I'll see you in the next.